Great to see all of you. How's everybody doing on a beautiful weekend? Y'all doing good? Good. Hey, welcome to uh, Foundations Church. We're delighted here. It's a beautiful weekend here in Colorado, and we live in paradise, and you're spending part of the weekend with us. That's always humbling, and so we're grateful that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being here. A lot going on, as Matt just said on the video announcement, so the best way to connect is our connecting table there on the back on the way out. Uh, that can give you all the moving parts. Life groups are starting up for the summer, so if you want to plug in and get to meet some people, this is a perfect time um, to do that, okay? Again, um, we're, we're really glad you're, if you're new here, welcome. Say hello to me on the way out. I'm always at the back door. Just shake my hand, say hi. I'd love to meet you. And again, uh, thank you all for being here. Every once in a while, I, I just like to hit the, the reset button, just because it's not for your sake, but for my sake, just because we do this every week, you get lost in the, in the uh, rat race of it all. And in my life, I don't know about you, but my life is a rat race, and right now the score is Rat 17, Carl 6. It ain't pretty, all right? So I got to do some work here, all right? So here, let me, let me show you why we do what we do. This is our mission statement. Um, we're here. We do this every week. We're here um, to bring the extraordinary life of Jesus to a lost and broken world. That's why we're here. We, we, uh, we despise, that's a strong word, but we, 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 we're against religion. Uh, re religion, uh, the, the, the very word means to be rebound. We believe Jesus has come not to bind people, but to set them free. And so the greatest asset of this church is the Holy Spirit. It's the greatest asset of this church, the Holy Spirit working in people. So the second greatest asset of this church is the people, the people of this church, because if everyone gets, gets connected with the fact that the Holy Spirit is working through our lives and we go out, man, we, we can make a difference on the front range. We're a bottom-up church, not top-down. I want to get out of the way. This church better not be dependent upon me or the staff here. We're, that's very limiting. But if we unleash the people of God, whoo, baby, we can really, really make a profound difference. So we want to know that we're here to, to bring the extraordinary life of Jesus to everybody. To everybody. And so we, we, we welcome everybody here. It doesn't matter if you're red, yellow, black, white, rich, poor, skinny, fat, Packer fan, Raider fan, Bronco fan. Everybody's welcome here. And we don't even care because human beings like to look at people and put them in categories. We don't even care what your proclivities are. You could be gay, straight, crazy, fink, funky, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, here's the deal. Here's what I know. God says this. Everybody on planet Earth is a sinner. So some people do it in crazy ways. Some people do it in socially acceptable ways. Here's what I know. Everybody here, this is what I like about it, everybody here stands on level ground with God. You're no better than me, and I'm no better than you. Okay? Everybody is messed up. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're messed up. Just tell them that. Okay. Okay. Look up here. Look up here. Don't enjoy that so much. Okay. Don't enjoy that so much. All right. Okay. Look up here and just say this. Just look up here and say this. Pastor Carl, you're messed up. Big time. Big time. No, no. Don't. I'm saying that. You guys already did your part. Okay. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm messed up really big time. I want you all to listen to this very, very carefully because this is significant. Okay, this is me talk, talking now. All of you are messed up. <laughs> Everyone, okay? And, and that puts everybody here at level ground, which means every one of us are in need of God's grace. And, and we don't want to judge people. Uh, our job is not the Holy Spirit to convict people of what they're doing right or wrong. Our job is just to say, there's a God that loves you. And probably if we're not connected to him, then probably we're living way below our privileges. Way below. But I'm too dirty. I'm too messed up. I can care less about God. That's human beings. We call that being a human. Just turn your face to God and his grace will start doing his work in our life. So that's what we want. And we, we, want, we want that to be accessible to every person on planet Earth. Every person. We, we, we don't want anything to get in the way of that. So at Foundations, we don't pass the offering plate because we don't want people to think, oh, it's about money. It's not about money. It's not about money. Uh, I don't, by choice, I don't, by choice, know what anybody gives to this church. I refuse to look at that, okay? I refuse because I want to treat everybody equally, whether you give a lot of money or you give no money. It doesn't matter. You matter to God. And because you matter to God, you matter to us. Now, I could guess sometimes. I could guess because sometimes people look, leave and they, they look away. It's like, oh, they're, they're feeling guilty. They didn't give. All right. We don't, we don't really care. 
We don't really care. You could come here a month and not give, a year and not give, five years and not give. We just want you to cultivate the, the understanding of who you are, who God created you to be, and what God wants to do in your life. And while I'm talking about that, I do, do however, want to say this. Thank you to all the people. I don't know who you are, but thank you to all the people who contribute unbelievably generously to this church. We, we are very, very blessed by the generosity of the people of this church. It's amazing. And so we're just thankful that people fill. I mean, if you believe what's going on here, then you can put money in on the way out in the bucket. If you don't believe what's going on here, you know, take some out on the way out or something. I, I don't know. But, but just, but just we, we, we just want you to know we're just really grateful. Every, everything, we, we made this decision before the church began because it's not our money. It's not. And so I, there are nights I've had sleepless nights where I thought, wow, I hope we're spending money correctly because uh, that it's, 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 it's a gift to us and we got to treat it really, really with a lot of wisdom. And, and, and so we, we, we treat that with a lot of wisdom. 10% of everything we take in as a church, we plow it back into the community. We give it. So we, we're, we're privileged to be able to help people. When we, when we help, I, we, I helped a, we, we helped a single mom and, and, and she just hug me with tears. Goes, thank you for helping. It's like, no, 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 no. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity. We're blessed to be able to help. That's what, that's what we're called to do. And speaking of that, we're, we're just about getting, we're really doing some fast-paced work at our children's space. So next week is open house, okay? So after service, you'll just get to run through there. You can just run through on your own. That's cool. We have some tours. We'll, we'll, some people from church will guide, here's what this is going to be, here's what this is going to be. And some people who are constructing from the, con from the, from the uh, contractor, he'll be here in case they want to explain stuff. They have added so much square footage to this church because we've added a whole nother floor in there they brought steel and concrete it's like wow i don't even know how they do it but it's amazing you'll want to see that next week just walk through and see all that's going on and then when they'll finish in july and about a week or two before they finish we're going to have another open house where everybody gets a magic mar uh, magic marker or whatever and we're going to be able to write all on the floors okay here god bless my grandkid when he Poops on the carpet or something, you know, or whatever you want to do, okay? Do this, do this, and, we'll, and it's just, you can autograph it and ask God's blessing on that space. And when we open up, we expect God's just going to do great things in the life of our children and grandchildren. So we're really, we're really grateful for that. Our effort, somebody asked me the other day, um, what's, your, what's, your <laughs> what's your target demographic at Foundations Church? We have none. Because if you're a person, you're our target demographic. Okay. If you're old, young, it doesn't matter. We want, we want to be a church to as many people as possible so they can understand what God wants to do in their life. In our effort, in our effort to, to um, bring the gospel to the world, because that, that, that's what we're doing, our, our goal is to bring it to everybody. And, and, and I, there was just a couple here last night. They, they, they were visiting from Omaha, and they said... Um, they said, you know what we do in our, in our life group? Because they have small groups. They go, no, what do you do in your life group? They go, we watch your service in our life group. Go, wow, well, you got to shoot higher than that, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of resources out there. Don't limit yourself, all right? Uh, but we've gotten, <coughs> we've gotten emails from Afghanistan, people watching our service. We've gotten, uh, so we've gotten emails from, from China, uh, almost from every state in the country who watches. And, and that, that, that's great. We're grateful for that. And the best way to do church is to do it in community with people, okay? Um, be, being, trying to walk with God in, a, in, in isolation apart from people is not what God wants. Because when you hang out with people, you'll find out people are crazy. It's like, I need God. I need God to love that person. Yes, you do. And that was, that's kind of how it works, okay? So God wants us to be in community. So, so, so that's, that, that's how it works. And in our, effort, in our effort to reach the world, we just made um, a hire. Well, we actually made it a little bit ago. Uh, we hired a, a person to be in charge of missions to help us locally to do our, in, in, in Jesus' terms, to do our Jerusalem, which is the front range, to do our Judea, which is Colorado and the United States, and to the uttermost parts of the world, Samaria and beyond. Okay? So we just hired a guy. We hired him a couple weeks, a couple months ago, but, but he had to wait till his kids got out of school and he was finishing a job at church, and so we really couldn't uh, finalize the deal. But I want to introduce you to Josh. That's Josh and his wife, Kristen, and his three beautiful kids. They're going to be joining us on June 21st. They roll into town. They already bought a house, and they're ready to roll. We had a staff retreat a couple 
weeks ago, and Josh flew in. He's from um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's why there's such a big smile on her face. They got out. <laughs> we made it. We made it. We got out. So we hired some cheese heads, okay? Avid Packer fans. So we got some evangelism work to do with him, okay? All right? So, but, um, but we are so grateful. He, he joined us on our staff retreat, and he fit in. Uh, like a hand in glove. It's just beautiful to have him on staff. And so uh, he, he's, he's going to be he's gonna be a tremendous, fabulous um, addition to our church. So when, when you see him, and we'll have him up here, and we'll introduce him when, when, when they get to Colorado in a couple of weeks. So we are, we are really, really glad to have them. So we're going to do a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. Also, I just want to mention this. <laughs> Hope I mentioned it the right way. Um, the board, I, by the way, we have a church board. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the leader of the church. We have an elder group that, that I'm accountable to, and we want it that way, <laughs> okay? We'll, we'll, you never want to put leadership in the hand of one person. That's very dangerous. And so I'm on the leadership team. They don't even give me a vote. And it's ridiculous, okay? So I have, like, no power here. It's like, whatever, all right? But anyway, they, they have been so kind, a great group of people to work with. They've been kind and gracious and just really fabulous to work with. So they thought, wow, Carl, you've been doing this, you've been doing this. So in the month of July... Um, the, uh, in the month of July, the uh, board has given me a gift of a sabbatical. So I'm going to be I'm going to be gone uh, the month of July on a sabbatical. The, a couple people on the way out at the first service says, "Are you are you okay? Are you know are you checking into like an, no?" I'm it's, it's 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 not because I'm bad. It's not because I'm bad or like I'm you know. It's just a gift. They says, "Hey, you know what? Church is five years old, five and a half, and and as a gift, we want to give you a sabbatical. So I'm going to be gone. You won't see me during the month of July." Okay, uh, and you won't find me in the month of July. Okay, all right, and it's just gonna be a great time for my family. So that's great. So I'm I'm grateful for that. When I announced it Saturday night, I said, "Hey, I have a sabbatical for the month of July." The whole congregation <laughs> broke into applause, and I didn't I didn't quite know how to take that. You know, I'm I'm gonna be gone for four weeks. Hey, all right, way to go! And it's like, man, alive! That that Saturday night crowd, they're they're, they're different. All right, but. But uh, so, so that's, that's what's going to happen. So for the, I'll be here the rest of June. In fact, we're doing this little Life 2.0 thing just, just to give you some, some um, keys, some thoughts on, on how God wants us to live, kind of rewire our software so we can live at a higher level. You know, when God calls you to, to live for him, he has us live at a higher level. He doesn't only want us to have life. He wants us to have abundant life. Uh, God wants us to live successfully, which we'll talk about that in just a second. And there's a lot of barriers that, that get in the way of, of us being the people that God wants us to be. So today I'm going to talk about a barrier that I have fought all my life. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a natural leader, and nor am I really a good leader. And, and I never uh, really, it never has come to me naturally. So uh, I, I have many sleepless nights. I got up in the middle of the night last night and my sheet uh, was soaked, you don't even know all this stuff, with, with sweat. Uh, but many times it is because I, 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 I'm like way in over my head. And, and I have nights where I sometimes just panic. I say, oh, my gosh, God, take me home. Okay. <laughs> I can't do this. And so I just panic because I'm not a natural leader. I'm not a confident leader. And I, things don't come natural. And, and, and when I started getting just by accident, I didn't even seek leadership. But, but when I started getting in that position, something happened that 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 was hard for me, and still is hard for me. And, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about how to deal with negativity. Because negativity is a powerful force in our world. And here's what I know. Here's where God wants us to be, called us to, 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 to big things. And on the other, when we're here, and on the other side of proclaiming who God wants us to be, is we have to be able to push through negativity. Are you all with me? And it's hard. And no one ever, I never had a class on how to overcome negativity. I, I never had anything. And so uh, I'm just trying to learn this on the go and try to talk to people and learn as I go. And so today we're going to talk about how to conquer negativity. Because how many people know that we just live in a negative world, right? The world's natural bent is towards negativity. It's just natural. If you say, hey, I'm just coasting. Well, you're in trouble because your coasting is going to take you into the negative world. It's a hard place to be in this world. If you have a positive attitude, it's because you didn't get that by accident. You had to fight for it. I used to think people are just naturally positive until I met them. It's like, no, people aren't naturally positive. You have to fight for it. Because if you put your emotional state in neutral, 
then I'm going to tell you something, you're headed downhill. Because this world and a lot of things in it are prone to the negative. And if you at all say, I'm going to do something with my life, I'm going to make something with my life, Katie, by the door, you're going to get criticism. Because people will say, who do you think you are? Which is never an accurate question. The accurate question is, who do you think God is? You don't want to think you're somebody because what your dreams, what you want to accomplish in life is so puny compared to what God wants. So the question is never, who do you think you are? The question is, who do you think God is? And once you start pursuing that, watch out, baby. There will be an avalanche of negativity, sometimes from the least people that you expect. It's amazing. So we're going to talk about that today. I am really, really glad. We, you should hear, you should hear, Three times. You should hear it in our announcements. When it's, you should hear it when Scott gets here. Thank you for being here. You should hear it from me. Thank you for being here. That's legitimate. Because apart from the great, great, great body of Christ, we can't do anything. So it's a privilege. It's a privilege for me and the rest of the staff to have the opportunity and the honor to serve you. Some of you are difficult. <laughs> but that's good. That stretches us. It's good. Thank God for difficult people because it helps us be better. If you just love lovable people, it ain't even love. It ain't even love. It's just returning an equation. So thank you for being difficult. Okay, dial it down a little bit, but thanks for being difficult, okay? Um, we're, we're really glad you're here. Welcome to Foundations Church. Here's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Let's stand as we read it. This is Ecclesiastes 10.10. Here it is. You, 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 you read the yellow, you only have one word here. You, you just read that, and I'll, I'll do the rest of the work, okay? If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, which means if you go into the forest and your job is to chop down, chop down trees, and your axe isn't sharp, you're going to work really, really hard, and you're not going to be very productive, right? Because if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but will bring success. Here's what I want you to know today. God wants you to be successful. You're not on planet Earth just to wait for the sweet by and by. We're here on Earth to make a difference. To make a difference. To be successful in God's eyes. Not in the world's eyes, but in, the, in God's eyes. To be successful. How do you become successful in God's eyes? You have to have some skill. Because you could work really hard. You could be a farmer. And say, I, and you could be determined, and you could have a great desire to have a great crop, and you could pray every night, God, I want a big crop. You have desire and you have determination, you pray big, but unless you go out there and have skill, you're not gonna have a big crop. You gotta plant seeds, you have to cultivate, you have to know how to do it. And when the wheat starts growing and you wanna harvest it, and you bring in a, a corn harvester for a wheat crop, you're gonna be in trouble. You have to have the right skill, you have to have the right skill. So is that how hard we work? This, boy, this verse could be paraphrased by saying this. Don't work harder, work smarter. smarter. We're going to talk about how to work smarter today. And part of that is being able to come to overcome the negative forces in our life. I couldn't be happier that you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. And the only way we're going to learn skill is listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't listen to me, Okay. So here's the intent of my prayer, and then we'll pray, is that you'll open up your heart. No matter where it's going on in your life today, you could be here and say, I could give a rip about God. It's all right. You don't have to care about him. He cares for you. I'm too dirty. I, all my life is one set of failures after another. That's all right. Thank God that his grace is greater than all of our sin. You may be indifferent. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if God really exists. Are we just hopefully thinking this? Because when they put us in the ground, don't we just become worm food? Huh? Are we just trying to hope there's a God? You could be there. You could be there. It's okay. God understands our doubts. God is bigger than our doubts. And you could be stuck today in a horrible, horrible, devastating, destructive addiction. And you're just here today because someone pulled you here. Glad you're here. Just because you're stuck in addiction doesn't mean God wants to know that he, that he, God wants you to know that he loves you and wants to use you. So keep on keeping on. So our prayer today is we open up our hearts so the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Because he knows what you need. He knows exactly what you need. And some of you today are doing good and some of you are barely holding on. And God has something for every one of us today. 
God's very nature is to give. For God so loved the world, he gave. And so no matter what state you're in today, he wants to give you something. So let's open up our hearts and ask that we'll be in a position to receive. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for every person here. Thank you for who you are. And thank you for how grand and glorious you are. Well, I, I forget that. I get caught up in the, in the hubbub of life, in the rat race of life. And I forget you're on your throne. And I forget you're in charge. And I forget you care about me. And I forget that I'm forgiven. And I forget that I'm a person who has a destiny that can never be taken away from me. So remind all of us today of who we are in you. Have your Holy Spirit do his work in our life today. And one more time. Ah, uh, tired, tired, tired of this. One more time we pray for our world. Mm. Devastation in London and in England yesterday. Uh, I resonate with the Apostle John in Revelation, the last book he says three times. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Our world is a mess. So for those who have been hurt and terrorized and devastated, we didn't even pray last week for the 29 Christians in Egypt who lost their life. It's a tough, messy world. And there's some people on our planet who have actually placed a target right on Christians. You're on your throne. We know, Father, that you're in charge. And so we pray for your presence and for your peace on our planet. And while we play for, pray for our planet, we know our planet cannot get better unless we get better, so we pray for ourselves as well. Take a look at the darkness, the hardness, the jadedness, the cynicism that can so easily crowd our heart. And may your grace soften it. And may we be open to have you do your work in our life. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you grab a seat. We're going to go real fast today, okay? So if you're ready to go, say, I'm ready. We're going to talk about negativity, and we're dealing with negativity, we have to deal with naysayers. Here's what naysayers are. This comes from uh, Webster's Dictionary. A naysayer. A naysayer. Anybody know a naysayer? Anybody know one? Don't point. Just want to know. Okay? All right? Okay? A person, by the way, naysayers are not bad people. Naysayers are not evil people. Naysayers are, not, naysayers are just misinformed people. Some of the greatest people in our life, I have, uh, I have naysayers, but they're great people in my life. They could be my family. You could be maybe even married. They're, they're, they're people that are just misinformed. Okay, so they're not evil people. A naysayer is a person who says something won't work. That won't work. Or isn't possible. Why are you doing that? Okay? A naysayer is a cynic who habitually expresses pessimistic views. Okay? So today we're going to talk about one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about, it's known for, the, for about, about a, it's a great story about a, a guy who was raised in a big family. He was the youngest in his family. He was a shepherd for part of his life. Uh, he would become a king. He had red hair. Who am I talking about? King David. And the pinnacle event in David's life was when he killed Goliath. That's recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But before he fought Goliath, in 1 Samuel, King, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, he has four battles he has to come to overcome to even get to the battle. So this is the battle before the battle. Are you all with me today, okay? Because you just don't fight a giant right away. you got to get through some things to show that you're ready to take on the giant. These are four forces in David's life that he had a face to overcome and to get to the position of even taking on the giant, okay? Now, before the story begins, let me just say this. It begins in 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 17 and 18 says this. David was held back from that war, and, and Jesse, his dad, sent him to do the battle, sent his sons, his brothers, to do battle. But he held David back to take care of the sheep, and every once in a while, he would give David a mission. He would give him, 1 Samuel 17 says, verse 17 says, he gave him some bread and some cheese and said, go take these to your brother. So the only way, the only way David even got to the battlefield with Goliath is he was faithful in delivering cheese and crackers. Are you all with me? Okay. 
So I want you to know this. You may think your life is trivial. You may think your life's not going anywhere. You may think, oh, what I'm doing is so mundane. Be faithful in the little, trivial, mundane things in the world because if you're faithful in the trivial, God has a way of catapulting you to the extreme battlefield quickly if you're faithful in the little things. Oh, I'm doing it delivering cheese and crackers. Be faithful with it because it may take you to the big battlefield. Are you all with me today? I throw that in for free, okay? So four forces, four forces he had overcome. Four big forces David had overcome in his life. Number one, his dad. Number one, his dad, okay? Number one, his dad. There was a prophet back in the time. His name was Samuel. Samuel said, I need to anoint a new king. And so, the, and so God told him, the new king is going to come from Jesse's house. That's David's dad. David goes to Jesse's, I mean, if Samuel goes to David's house. Hold on, slow down, Carl. Samuel went to Jesse's house and said, hey, one of your boys is going to be the new king. Oh, okay. So he paraded all his boys out. Samuel said, not him, not him. I like you, but not you. Not you, not a Chevrolet hat, no way, okay, okay? <laughs> Just let me do this, okay? Not, not, not you, okay, okay? And he goes, and he went through all the boy, and he goes, no, no king. He, Samuel's puzzled, he goes, God told me the king's gonna come from your family. Do you have any more kids? Oh, yeah, Pfft. the little punk redhead kid. He's out with the sheep. Let me see him. So they bring in the youngest punk. Samuel looks at him and says, that's the new king of Israel. The prophet had more promise and hope in David than David's own dad did. Are you all with me today? Okay? And then, and then, look at this verse here. Look at this verse here. Now, David was a son of a man named Jesse. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers were in, 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 at war. And David was, went back and back and forth because his dad held him back so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. He didn't even let the boy go to battle, okay? Here's what I want to tell you today. Some of us in this room have been held back and have scars that be from our family of origin. Are you all with me today? And those scars cut deep and hold us back. I've had four older men in my life. My grandpa lived with me. Of course, I had my dad. And I had my oldest brother, and I had my other oldest brother. Here's what I know about my brothers. Now, here's what I know about my brother. All the negative emotions that a person can have, sadness, anger, fear, all the negative emotions in the older men in my life, as they got older, all their negative emotions got worse. Are you all with me? Doesn't seem so. All right, I lost you there, okay? Okay, they all got worse. As grandpa got older, he got more angry and more depressed. As my dad got older, he got more angry, more depressed. As my oldest brother got older, he got more angry, drank more, got more depressed. You all tracking with me? Okay. So I watched this. So I made a decision. Here's my mission in life. I decided this when I went away to college. I went away to college. <laughs> and I made this decision. The world, here's my mission in life. The world has never seen an old man Sutter who's happy. <laughs> so here's my mission in life. It's not a church and all that. That's secondary. Here's my inside. God works on the inside out. Here, here's my mission in life. I want to be the first old man Sutter on planet Earth who's happy. <laughs> now let me tell you something. Here's what I've noticed. As I've gotten older, my negative emotions have gotten stronger. I didn't think it would happen. I wasn't prepared for it. But fear has grown stronger in my life, not weaker. Sadness, fighting it, has grown stronger in my life, not weaker. There are days I get up on the weekend and I fight God. I fight him. I'm not going to church today. You have to. You're the pastor. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going. I don't want to go. No, you have to go. No, I can't go. I can't go. I'm not going to go. You got July off. It's not helping me in June. Okay, all right? Okay, all right? 
and I have fights with God. I have fights with God because my negative emotions have gotten stronger with time. Are you all tracking with me today? Okay. I bear scars from my family of origin, and I have to fight them. I have to fight them almost on a daily basis because I know what God wants me to do. I can never do it if I cave in to anger, fear, and sadness. Are you all tracking with me? Okay. Big time problems. So I want to say something to all of you who have been wounded by your family of origin. I want to say something because I deal with so many of us who fall in that category. First of all, God's heart goes out to you. Okay? First of all, I just want you to know that God loves you. Okay? And he is called, this is big for me, he is called our heavenly father. Because he is my real father. My dad on planet earth was my temporary one. Any scar that any person has from your family of origin, I want you to hear this loud and clear because I know they cut deep. I fight them every day. Any scar or wound or abandonment that you've experienced from your family of origin, you could overcome it by the grace and the power and the love and the forgiveness of God. Are you all with me today? Do not, do not let what somebody in your family said or did to you hold you back from the destiny God has called on your life. Are you all tracking with me today? Okay. Number two, we'll keep moving. Number two is culture. His culture was negative. The whole, <laughs> the whole culture he was raised in was negative. The whole thing was just negative. It was just crazy. And everybody's living in fear. Watch this. Okay, watch this. Goliath stood there and called out. See, instead of fighting a war with armies, Goli the two armies agreed, just you bring your best warrior, I'll bring my best warrior. We'll save bloodshed at least. So they called out Goliath, who was like eight feet plus tall. Whew, wow, we didn't expect that. Okay? All right, and Goliath come out there, and he called out the Israel army. Hey, why bother using your whole army? I challenge the troops of Israel to say, give me your best man. Let's fight it out together. And when Saul and his troops heard the Philistines challenge, you read the yellow. What were they? They were, ah, no way, no way. The whole army, get this, the whole army culture was fear and hopeless because of one man. Did you ever work in an office where one person controls the whole atmosphere? One person. It's one person. You're in a family like one person. I told my kid the other day, you're not the only sutter. I said it in love, but it was hard, though, okay? <laughs> There's more stutters in his house than you, okay? <laughs> because one person can, can ruin a whole environment. Does that make sense? Ruin a whole environment. Here's what happened. This, this, this is, I want to ask you what voice you're listening to in your life. For 40 days, how many times a day? Every morning and every night, the Philistine champion strutted out in front of the Israelite army. Every day. Twice. We have to be careful who we allow, what voice we allow into our life. Are you all with me? Let's be careful. 40 days, the Philistine, here's the resulting effect. Here's the resulting effect. And he just talked with them. Goliath, the Philistine champion, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, you read the yellow. They began to run away and they were freaked out. They were freaked out because, because the whole culture was negative. I want to ask you today, whose voice has the most power in your life? That's a good question right there. Whose voice has the most power in your life? There was a culture that was just dominated by fear because they were allowing this giant to have the voice. Number three, his brother, his brother held him back. <laughs> his brother, I have two, by the way, okay? Uh, his brother did, okay? Watch this. Watch this. When David's oldest brother heard David talking to the man. Now, now David's, David is at the fight. He's at, he, he, he's at the place of the battle. How did he get there, by the way? Anybody know? Cheese and, Cheese and crackers, okay? How did he get there? He, when, when his brother saw, he, his brother was angry. Like, hey, the older brother. He, he's angry. He, he's angry. And then he said these words to David, which my brothers used to say to me all the time. Why are you, what are you doing around here? Go, you can't play basketball. Go in the house, you little punk. Get out of here. And his brother is, is, is actually dominating. Next slide says this. I, I know about your pride and deceit. J just, you want to see, you, you want to see better? And when David says, I'm just, I'm just here asking a question. 
oh, all, all I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Because his brother, which I said at the beginning, his brother was saying, who, who do you think you are? And David was saying, it doesn't matter who I think I am. It matters who God thinks I am. Now, when I got married to Vicki, I moved away from home. I moved away from home. <laughs> and so um, uh, uh, I, I told her one holiday, I says, brace yourself. I'm going to Cleveland for a Sutter holiday. <laughs> this is going to be fun, all right? Okay? And so she came home, and, and uh, we got in the car to go back, and, and here's what she said in her, in her kind, loving, but truthful way. She goes, I don't like you when you're at home. I love you, but I don't like you when you're home. Uh -huh. I got some things to say, but let's just stay, stay in this one for a second, okay? Uh, uh, why? Why? And here's what she said. And it hurt me like a knife. She, because when you're at home, you revert to just being a little boy again. Are you all with me? And she was 100%. I know exactly what she did. She didn't have to explain anything. I got it. As soon as I got around my brothers, I became a little wimp. Just fall right into place. And she married a man. Are you all with me? She married a manly man, by the way. Okay? All right? Okay? All right? And, and uh, that's not funny. And, uh, and, uh. <laughs> And I got it because I, 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 I'm glad she had the guts to tell me the truth because I was telling myself that all the time, but I was giving myself a pass because my brothers held me back because I gave them too, too much power in my life. Anytime you give anybody in your life more power than you give God in your life, the result will always be chaos. Are you with me, people? Okay, all right. Now, now in a loving way, in a loving way, because we're pro-family and pro-marriage around here, I think. Okay? I mean, we are. I'm just kidding. That means, I'm sp speaking to adults now. Okay? Speaking to adults, like adults. You're out of the home. Kids, listen to this, kids. Listen to your parents, okay? <laughs> but once you get out of the house, the Bible says leave and cleave. So I dare not give too much power to my dad. Are you all with me? I dare not give too much power to my mom. I dare not give too much power to my brothers. Now I love my wife, but I dare not put her in the place of God himself. Only God belongs in that place. And if I give power to any human being more than I give power to God, the result will always be chaos. You with me? This is worth coming to church for, by the way. Just, just, just free, free. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you'll miss me in July. Yeah, okay. okay, number four, the experts. The experts, okay, the experts. The experts. Hey, the experts aren't always right. They're not always right. Sometimes you don't need to be an expert. An amateur built the ark and experts built the Titanic. Are you all with me today, huh? Okay, all right, the experts aren't always right. So here's an expert. David's at the fight scene. And, 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 and David said, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. By the way, we don't have time. The Philistines brought their tallest guy out on the army to fight. Guess who the tallest Israelite is? Saul, he should be fighting. He ain't, he wimped out. Now, David, because he's so unique, and this is what I want you to get today, everybody here is unique. So don't go by the experts because God wants to do something uniquely through you. Back then, the only way you could fight was hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're not going to fight a guy eight foot plus because he'll just lift up his foot and step on you. So no one's getting close to him. But David, when he spent a lot of lonely time out, on the sh out taking care of the sheep, he got really, really good with the slingshot and throwing a rock with perfect accuracy from a long distance away. So while everybody is freaking out that Goliath is so big, David's saying, thank you, God, that you made him so big. I'd have trouble hitting a midget. But this guy, I'll put him on his keister right away, okay? I can put him down, okay? So David, because he had a unique, unique ability, David said, I'll go fight him. And here's what the experts said. Don't be ridiculous. Anybody ever say that to you in your life? Don't, you can't do that. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight. You're only a boy. You're just a little sissy. Now, I want to tell you something. 
These are all these negative forces. He hasn't even faced the giant yet. He's already facing the force of his family, his dad, culture, which I want to tell you something. Our culture is bent towards negative. I get it. But we got to tell our kids that they're bigger than our culture God is. I don't want my kids going to school fearful of peer pressure and the bully. I want my kid to know you're going to school empowered by God himself. And you're not going to be affected by peer pressure. In fact, your light's going to shine so bright, you're going to make a positive impact on the school you're going to. You don't need to go to school in fear. You go to school with power. Because greater is God who's in us than any spirit that's in the world. Are you all with me? Okay? So he, David, had, he had, he's got his dad, his brother, his experts, culture, all working against him. But he fought through all that negativity. How do you do it? Four quick things, and we got to go. Number one, number one, he knew that they were not God. Never put an expert in the place of God. Only God belongs on that seat. He knew they were not God. Know that your naysayer, it could be your boss, it could be a family member, it could be a neighbor. Could, don't give your power. Hey, don't give your power away to any person. Are you with me, church? I'm going to say it one more time, and you say amen. That means it's true, okay? Don't give your power to another person. Amen. amen. Stand in your power. Men, I can only speak to men because I don't know women. But I can only speak, I've been doing men's work since 1997. So I've seen men devastated by family wounds. And then, and then they don't know where their power comes from. And then I've seen this. I don't know how women work, but I know men. Men, when you give your power away to a woman, either real or virtual, you weaken yourself and chaos will reign supreme in your life. Yeah, men don't say anything with that. It's, yeah, yeah, just, uh, that's all right. It's good. I got it. Okay. Okay, because if you say amen, your wife will say, when you get in the car, what did you say that for? And you just so, so your smart thing is just to look forward and say, wow, he has no idea. He's crazy, pastor is today, okay, all right? Okay, so just do that, all right? Okay, but when you give your power, you, you, because God didn't make us to find our power through the best way. When, you know how I'm a best husband? Is when I find my power from God and move into Vicky's world with strength instead of weakness. Move into, my, whoa, whoa, whoa. move into my kids' world with strength, not saying, oh, I need, I need you to hug me because I'm, I'm, I'm a needy dad. Ah, it's gross. <laughs> you got to get your power from God, okay? Know that you're not God. He, 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 here's a verse. Here's a verse, Proverbs 29. Oh, this is from the message. It's a paraphrase. The fear of human opinion, Trusting in God protects you from, oh, when I read this verse, I put my head down on my desk because I think it's the greatest disability in the world today. Bigger than heart problems. Bigger than any disability you can mention. The biggest disability on the planet today is the fear of human opinion. It stops us. But trusting in God protects us from that. And then Isaiah says this. we got to keep moving. Isaiah says this. Don't fear anything except the Lord of the armies of heaven. If you fear him, you need not fear anything else. God is in control. Don't give anything the power that rightfully belongs to God. So here's a question I want to ask you. We can't spend time on it. What am I allowing? Who am I allowing? What am I allowing to play God in my life? That's a good question to ponder today. Just think about it. Who or what? My job? Money? Hell? What, what, what am I doing? Health? What, 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 who, who am I? Because if you let anything play the role of God in your life, you'll have chaos. Number two, don't get distracted. You are here on planet Earth because God has a mission for you. It could be to have a good marriage, a family, whatever it is, but don't get distracted. Now, Nehemiah in the Bible was a businessman. He was an astute businessman. And he loved his, his origins, taken back to Jerusalem. He wasn't living in Jerusalem, but he heard that the city's walls were destroyed. And he, and he wept over that. He goes, that's my hometown. That, he goes, I'm a businessman. So Jeremy, I mean, Nehemiah was awesome. He cut deals, did all kinds of things, great fundraiser. He says, I'm going to build a wall. So he went back to Jerusalem and started building the walls. And the enemies didn't want Jerusalem to have walls around it. So they did all kinds of things. You can read it. Rumors. They created rumors. They ridiculed. They did all kinds of things. And then they says, come on, hey, let's negotiate. Come talk to us. They're Facebook, we have Facebooking them. And he goes, oh, you ever get lost on Facebook? I won't ask for hands because everyone will go, you ever get lost, okay? And he said this. So Nehemiah replied by sending this message to them. I'm engaged in a great work. 
That's why God has us on planet Earth to be engaged in a great work. Are you all tracking with me? And if you don't know what it is today, that's okay. But find out what it is because God has you on this planet to do something great. Nehemiah says, I'm engaged in great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Four times they wanted to meet with him. He said, no way. Here's what happens when we start doing something great for God. We got, we're on point. We're on purpose. And then we get distracted. And then we forget our mission and spend time with the distractors. And God says, it's just the opposite. Continue to focus on your mission and forget the distractors. You don't have to explain your motives to people. Are you all with me? In the book of Matthew, it says at the end times, all the motives of everybody will be revealed. Mm, a little scary, but anyway, you don't have to explain your motives. Why are you doing this? You don't have to know. You don't have to know. You don't have to know. This is what I'm doing. And Nehemiah got the wall built in record time because he wouldn't get distracted. Number three, never attack back. When you're being attacked, never attack back. Temptation is to get on a computer, right? Blog something, Facebook. Something. Don't, don't attack back. Don't attack back. Here, here, here's what Proverbs says. It says, it's foolish to speak scornfully of others. If you're smart, just keep quiet. And here's how you become like God. First Peter. First Peter says this. This is about Jesus. Jesus did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God. I like that. I like that. Don't retaliate. I didn't know this, but as I'm getting older, I'm learning. I said this a couple weeks ago. When we try to defend ourselves, we lose the awesome privilege of experiencing God as our defender. Let God be our defender. A lot better, a lot better. Number four in closing, focus on God and his promises. That's what we'll do, just focus on God. There's 7,000 promises in the Bible. I'd, I'd like to write a book, How to Survive on 7,000 a Year, because you can you know where I got that from? I got it from your dad, by the way. But anyway, I will talk later. Focus on the promises of God. Watch this. Watch this. First Samuel. This is when David, David was now king, and everything was kind of a mess. And now David was in great danger. And when you're in great danger, all his loyal men turn bitter. You know how people can turn pretty quickly. People like following you when things are going good. But when you're in great danger, watch how loyalty can turn to bitterness Whew, overnight. And they began to talk about stoning David, not Colorado stoning. This is killing him, okay, all right? And watch what David did. David did this. David found strength in the Lord his God. You feel weak, you feel depleted. Don't go to people to get it. Find our strength in God. Next verse, real quickly. We've got two more, then we're done. Psalm 118.6. By the way, I believe this is true. Someone check me. I believe this is the middle verse of the entire Bible. Smack dab in the middle. It's a good one. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? That's worth memorizing. What can mere human beings do to me? They can't do anything because God is where my strength lies. And lastly, in closing, David. This is, this is Psalm 119. This is from the message. I learned it the way the Bible says I have hidden his word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's how I memorize it. But this is the message. I kind of like this one. It says this. David speaking. says, I've banked your promises in the vault of my heart. I got them. So when life comes at me fast and furious, I can pull something out because it's not true. What's true is what God says. Now, the band's going to come up right now, okay? And I just want to tell you this. I've had all that. I speak with passion about this today because I've experienced. I've experienced what it's like to come from a family that's wounded me, from a negative culture, from brothers that were less than kind, and, and from experts who told me I was wrong. And the cumulative effect of that on my life created the biggest naysayer of all. You know who that is? Me. I could talk myself out of anything. Can't do it. Not big enough. Not fast enough. Not smart enough. Not strong enough. Not all the time. I, I have a litany that can go a mile long of all the reasons why I'm going to fail. I fight a story in my life that, that we're going to build a church here at Foundations only for Carl Sutter to blow it up. Just hang in there. Carl will blow it up sooner or later. Okay? 
He'll do it. He'll do something stupid, crazy. I fight all this all the time. So we have to take on the biggest naysayer ourselves. A couple years ago, a friend of mine came up to me. He's a little younger than me, not much, little. And he says, I'm embarrassed to ask this question. I go, what? He goes, I know him very well. He goes, will you officiate my wedding? I go, I'm your buddy. I'm your buddy. Why are, you, why, why are you offended by that? He goes, because, and I know his life. He goes, this is my third one. What am I supposed to do? Go to the altar and say, hey, God, this time I'm serious. And I get what he's saying. When you fail enough, you just even think God's given up on you. So I says, Were you, are you the same person now that you were when you got married the first time? You did? No. 20? No. Are you the same person now that when you got married? No. No, I'm, I'm a different person. So you know what? Forget talking about yourself. Let's believe what God says, that grace is greater than your sin. Should I invite friends? I go, absolutely. So I officiated his wedding, and today, they have a beautiful, amazing marriage that I envy. It's beautiful. I thought about that, and I said, how many people in this room, how many people right here today are missing out on some of God's great blessings because you're naysaying yourself out of it. Are y'all with me, church? You didn't fall asleep on me, all right? Big, big, because I love you. And I want us to be successful. And I don't want the naysayers in our life to rob us of the great blessings God has in our life. God loves you. And God got plans for you. And don't let yourself or others talk you out of being the person that God wants you to be. You got that? Let's all stand together. So God, thank you. It's not a surprise. <laughs> we, you, you, your God committed the truth. It's not a surprise. You told us with no ambiguity at all that in this world, this is a promise. It's a promise from you. In this world, we will experience tribulation. That comes right from the mouth of Jesus. <laughs> no ambiguity there. And yet when I get hit blindsided, my first question is, how could a loving God do this? You promised there'd be tribulation because you want to strengthen us to push through negativity, to push through the naysayers, to push through our own doubt and our own fear and be able to embrace the great gifts you have for your children. So today, Father, strengthen us. Strengthen us to push through the negativity, the naysayers, our own self-doubts, and help us find our power in you. And like David, may we strengthen ourselves in you so that we're ready for the battles that you have for us that we can fight to bring glory and honor to Jesus. Do your work in our life. In Jesus' name we pray.